Thank you, colleagues, for your patience. Um, yeah, let's, let's get started with this concept of exceptions. Uh, but normally, this the, 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 the concept of exceptions is not going alone. Um, it is accompanied by a second um, part to it that we call the handling of exceptions. Because uh, when exceptions take place, uh, they must be handled, all right? But I want to get from you, anyone who wants to share some ideas or of their understanding of, of the concept of exceptions. What are exceptions? Um, another person maybe can also come in and talk about um, the handling thereof. Um, if we have exceptions, wh why the need to, to, to handle them? Any volunteer? just to share the understanding. Come on, my students. Huh? Any volunteer? Just to talk about your own understanding of the concept. Can we have somebody, please? Any volunteer? Sure, 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 sure. In a way, in a way, it's like writing a, a code that has like an error, and handling it is like uh, removing that error. In a way, for example, if if we we use like arrays, and then yeah. the array is like out of bound, then we can write a handle which uh, will override the the error, which is oh. over bound. Mm, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Any any dif any different view, mm. or if not different, just a view to augment what has already been said by Madibe. Nana, when we talk of exceptions, what do you think? What comes to mind? So honestly speaking, um, the word is a bit, okay, it's new for me in the conception of programming. Mm. Let's, yeah. What we need to do, let's take it outside of programming now. Let's take it outside programming because what is very key, the very start, it is you appreciating the literal meaning of the word exception, you know? Um, just, let's forget a little bit about programming. Um, just the literal meaning. When you go through the dictionary, what understanding do you get out of that? You know? Right, uh, Malulek. Okay, yes, can uh, I say something? Ish, sorry. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Then after you, Malulek, will come in. Uh, I can say it's something like out out of the rule. Like it's. Mm. It's doing something differently. Okay. Yeah. So you are saying that you are having a set of rules on how things ought to behave. But yes. now an exception is something that now gets to be outside of these rules that you have set up. Yes. Okay. Manuleke? Yes. Uh, Nana just, she said it quite nicely. Um, but I think also something to say is, mm. is when you write a program yeah. and then you have this exception in other words something in the program is doing something that is outside of the rules as nana and the other gentleman said yeah um your program would then stop working right so yeah. what you what exceptions do is it's a way of making your program continue running without, uh, let's say, crashing. So let's say you have an array in your program and you try to add stuff that is bigger than the array. Your program would stop working and complain that the array is too small to add more stuff and that the program will stop working. So an exception would be a way of saying, okay, if I try to add something to the array and it's too small, don't just stop working. Yeah. Uh, uh, do something else. So that is 
the exception where it finds that the array is too small, and then mm -hmm. the handling where you say do something else instead of just stop working. Oh, OK, OK. Thank you very much. All of you guys are really correct. You know, um, you, you have said a mouthful. So exceptions, basically, it is, uh, we can also say, as we, just to add to what we have, we have said, it is an occurrence of an error in your program. And then the problem it is that when an error occurs in your program, then you'll find that the program misbehaves, you know. But what you then need to do is to say that if an error occurs during the running of my program, what, 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 what do I need to do, you, you know? Can't you respond, make sure that you handle that error so that you respond to it in a gracious manner? That is gracefully so. That is the handling part. So you have an exception, an exception or an error taking place. Then you 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 then get to a point say that if it occurs, then how do I act uh, or react to that in the form of handling? Uh, basically that exception. Now, let's do just a practical example. It's going to be an easier one um, just to re reinforce what you guys basically have said. The issue of an occurrence of a of an exception of an error and the handling thereof. Right, um, can we have Twitter switching off your mic unless you want to say something? Okay, yes, thank you very much, Twitter. So let's just create a basic pro uh, pro program mm. that is going to add two numbers. And then we will see what is like what is likely to happen. What, what are the errors that are likely to occur when we run such a program? So let's do that. And then we learn something along the way. Let me share with you my screen. Father, where did there it is? There's no peace. Okay, let me take that out. All right. So let's just create a base program that is going to determine the sum of two integers. Okay. Let's call this sum data minor app. Okay. This is our class. Okay, let's start here and declare the variables. Okay, so say we have num1, num2, and sum. Now we say here get uh, the, the numbers, get the two numbers. numbers what do we do here we will say that um j option pay okay. let me check the chat there are people look just in the lobby okay let's just admit okay let's go back so we can have the joy show op option pain and then say that show Input dialog. We just pass the null there in, and then we say that please enter the first number. Please enter the first number. Okay. This is going to let's make an import statement. It's going to return an in a string. We convert the string to an integer. And then we store that integer in num1. Okay. Let's get the second one. So this is going to be num2. Uh, please enter the, the second. 
let's say please enter the second number. Okay, we store it there. And then after that, we then determine the sum. Sum is going to be equal to num1 plus num2. Okay, and then let's display the sum. J option pane. Show message dialog. And then we will say here the sum of plus num one, the sum of num one and num two is. So let's do the sum there. Right, so this will this will be the end of our program. Let's run this program and see. So this is easy. We expect somebody to enter an integer. We somebody enters a 12. And then they click OK. We ask for the second number. They enter an eight. And then things are working as expected to say that the sum of 12 and eight is 20. So this is fine. The question gets to be, what happens if the unexpected take place? Let's have a look at the une unexpected. Right, say that rather than a person entering a number, they enter a letter. Let's say that is R, all right? When you click on OK, look at what happens. This is how our program just, uh, uh, behaves. So we have this information that is in red. This we call the stack trace. The stack trace simply tells us the occurrence of events, how events unfolded. So if we read this, we will see the following. For the, so the first thing that we are seeing is that there's an exception that took place uh, in Maine. And then the name of that exception is called number format exception. This number format exception is found in the java.lang package. All right. And then question gets to be, when do we have, what caused this? What, what caused this exception to take place? It is for input string R. That's what we are seeing there. So that is the first line, that's what it is saying. But when we want to see how the events unfolded, then we need to start right at the, at the, or at the last line, you know, because that one is quite informative for us. It says that this excep exception originated in the class called some determiner uh, app.java. In, in line 20. Ah, is it you? <laughs> Driving cars. All right. So, okay, but right at the beginning, the stack trace tells us that this is where the exception originated. Now, if you check line 21, 24, it is this line. That, that is where we entered an R rather than an, a number. That's what we did. And then it is said that a call immediately after this exception was made, a call was made to that to the pass int method of the integer class. If you want to see this, uh, what caused this is that we can always go to the integer class on line 527. If you go to the integer to Java um, class line 527, um, that is where the call was was made, and then this call subsequent to it, it, it was also made in the integer in the integer class, in uh, with uh, on that method called pass int on line four nine nine, and then as a result of that, then this number exception um, exception basically um, was was thrown. 
So this is the occurrence of, of events. All right. Now, a quick look again, something else that we can also be able to learn over here. You will see that in this line, in that line, an error, an exception took place called number format exception. So, and then this number format, this number format exception, then what happened to it, it is that immediately that it was thrown. Code following that, that the, 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 the following the, the instance where the where the exception was thrown, that code is ignored. As you can see, after the exception was thrown there, this line of code was not executed, that was not executed, and that one was not executed. So this thing is very, very, very important to, to appreciate. All right. And then one of the reasons now gets to be, the reason that we are seeing this kind of unfriendly message, if one may put it that way, it is because when this exception was thrown in that line, the Java application looked for a block of code that handles that exception. All right. But it found none. And since it found none, it threw this exception as our output. Just imagine that you are before your ATM and then you are supposed to enter numbers, your pin code, and then it's expected for you to enter, let's say, about four digits and then you only enter three and then you press enter. Something that I do believe that you won't appreciate, it is for you on the basis of you having made a, an error, having entered three digits rather than four, and then you get a stack, a stack trace. You wouldn't appreciate that. Rather, what you would want to see, it is that you would want information th that is highly informative to you as a person to say that, to say to you, Vuisile, you have made this error rather than entering three digits, you entered, and rather than entering four, you entered two digits. So it means that that is how you would love to see it. So that part, that comes up with a, that, that part of the code, that comes up with a, with the handling of an exception. It is what we call, we, we, we normally call the catch block. So an exception gets thrown, then you need a corresponding block that is going to catch, that is going to handle that the said exception. Now let's quickly go and have a look at this because this an exception is a class by itself. Now let's check this. If you go to your Java docs, Okay. Then in the Java Docs class, you control find, you find the number format, number format exception. There it is. It is the number format exception. Double click on it. All right. So what do we know? We know we know basically the the following that. Also reading from here, okay, before doing that, firstly is to say that we have a class called the number format exception. It is found in the java.lang package. As a result of that, we, when we want to work with this kind of an exception, we don't need to import the package because all the classes that are found in the java.lang package, they are automatically uploaded or they are automatically imported. So you don't need to um, specifically, um, directly, uh, explicitly um, import any class that is in the java.lang. So we also read the following, that a number format exception is an illegal argument exception it is also a runtime exception. It is an exception, and an exception is throwable, and then throwable is an object. So you have that inheritance hierarchy that is shown therein. The question gets to be, when does this exception get thrown? 
you are told that it gets thrown to indicate that to indicate that the application has attempted to convert a a string to one of the numeric types something of which we are currently encountering you are having a a, a letter and then we are attempting to to convert a letter to an integer then the question now gets to be um let's quickly go back which method specifically specifically throws this exception we are told that it is this method called pass int all right of the class integer now let's quickly go to this class called integer and have a look at the method called pass int so we can go and search for integer Here is the integer class. Okay. So we we are interested in a method called pass int. That one. Okay. Let's click on it. Okay. So there is the method. Let's look at the method header. All right. That method header says the following. We have a method called pass int. It accepts a string argument. It, it returns an integer. So it takes a string argument and then it will return back to us an integer. It is static, meaning that it belongs to this class called integer. Um, and then again, the implication of that will be that we access it, it via the class name. That is why we say integer dot pass int we don't create an instance of the integer class to access this method. And then this method, it is public. It's not private, it's not protected, it's not friendly, it's public. So it can be accessed anyway. Here's something that is of interest now. We are told that when using this method, know very well that this method throws a number format exception. Now, when does it throw the number format exception? It throws the number format exception if the string does not contain a passable integer. So, meaning that when working with a pass int method, we need to know that if that string is not passable, this method it is going to it's going to throw a number format exception now seeing or having this kind of method uh, explanation given to us our responsibility is to say that when when that number format exception basically takes place can't we have code that can deal with that of which we can so let's try that if we come here so currently what we have established, it is that he, these two, these two lines of code, they are likely to, to throw an, a number format exception because of the pass int method, all right? Now, knowing that, we then need to come up with a, with a line of code, with code that is going to handle that. So that is what that is where now the issue of trying and catching. So we will say that we are going to try to do the following. This is what we are going to try doing. But in, in case something goes wrong here, of which we know there is something that can go wrong here, we will then catch, we will handle that ex exception. We know the specific exception that we need to handle. It is a number format exception that emanates from the pass int method. So we will say that in this block, we will catch, we will catch this number format exception. Number format exception. That is what we will do. All right. Then in here we will write code that is going to handle that number format exceptions. Let's try this. Let me copy that line of code 
and paste it there. And then I say that um, unexpected input. Let me just write unexpected input type. Okay. Um, please enter um, enter a passable string, a passable string. We can say something along those lines. Okay. So continuing with this, let me go check the chats to see if there's no one asking questions there. So Malulek will replace them. What are you going to replace? The web test can't really replace. Ah, guys, you are still talking about things such as this. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Formatives are suspended. Okay, let me ignore that. Um, we're going to judge if the next ATS web test is replacing the formative. Let's forget about that. So, what will replace them? We are informed in the course. Get parallels for Meg, then install. All right, thanks. So there's nothing to worry about for now. Let me proceed. Okay, let's try and run this code. Okay, so let's quickly recap over here. What we have managed to establish thus far, it is to say that when, an, when, an, when the number format exception occurs at that line, whatever follows is not going to be executed. That's what. Rather, what is going to happen, it is that execution will go to the catch blocks and check if there is the catch block um, that is handling that specific exception that is taking place here. In this regard, we know that these pass int methods, they are, throw, they are throwing the number format exception, all right? That throw in the number format exception. So when that number format exception is thrown, execution will go to, to the catch blocks. We can have a number of these catch blocks, not only one, two, three, four, five. All right. Then execution will come here, and then the compiler or the pro or Java will check for a corresponding um, exception handler. If it's not there, we will see that stack trace. It means that the, the exception that is being is being thrown over here is not handled. But if a corresponding exception handler or a catch block is there, code written inside of the catch block will be executed. Okay, let's try this. One. So please enter the first number. I enter a 12. Enter a 45. Okay, this works well as, as expected. If I run here, I enter a 12 therein, but for the second number, let's say I enter a G, all right, and I click OK. Now, therein, you see the message that I provided therein that says an unexpected input type. Please enter a passable string. It is exactly what I had written therein. Okay, when I click OK, that will be the end of my program. But at times, what I would love to do it is that when I encounter an exception, rather than just ending the program, rather than just ending the program, I would say that why don't I repeat this? Why don't I give someone an opportunity to redo this. Okay, so we can introduce here a boolean, a boolean variable, boolean variable that we are going to call, maybe let's say do again, do it again, do it again. But at the beginning, we, we seem to say um, uh, true. And say true or false, it doesn't matter. So the way that it is going to work, it is that if somebody enters something that it is correct, and also then somebody enters something that is correct, 
then we will determine that sum we will display. But right at the end, we will have one. We will have a uh, we will have a statement there in that says that's that says everything everything went well. Everything went well. So don't repeat. And that statement will say that this do again. Do it again. In here, I will make it to be false. OK. Then I can then say that um, out, then outside here, I can have something such as this. Uh, let's do this. Let's do what is below. Let's do this. Um, while somebody wants this to do this again. Do it, do it again. Yeah. So let, let, let's try that. So if it is true therein, the only time it's going to be false, it's here. But, but should there be a problem here, we will display this message and then after that, that will be the end of the catch block. Then we will check that flag, we'll find that that flag it is true and then we'll come back and redo this. If the person um, again enters something that it is not correct, we, we, we will do this. Execute that, that block, we will do this again, but if everything is correct, then at the end we will say that let's make this do again to be false okay because when we check that flag here we'll find that it is false then that will be the end of the of the program okay, let me maybe do something such as this paste there and say goodbye sorry So let's rerun this code. One. Let's do the obvious. Somebody enters a one, a two. So the sum of these is three. Okay, goodbye. That's the end of the program. Okay, everything is right. But say that in this case, somebody gets to enter a 14, and, and then, then after that enters a K, We'll be told that there's an unexpected input a type. Please enter a passable string. Then we will do this again. Okay. Then if somebody enters an R, then we'll be told again this is unexpected. Enter again. Enter a 12. You enter a 13. This is expected. That will be the end of our program. Right. Let me go back to the chats. Any question? Questions thus far. Any question, questions? Okay. There are none. Um, Sorry, let's sir. Try. Yes, Katar. I do have a question regarding uh, the catch there. Can you go on the catch part? On the, on the catch part? Yeah. Let's go down to it. Yes. Uh, when uh, when, when we are dealing with numbers or letters, are we supposed to put there is any format for us to write number format exception uh, F and E? Is there any anything we can write other otherwise? Yeah, you can write anything. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that this is a variable of that type. And if right. you can write whatever that you need. So NFE. So what I can also do with that NFE, it is that I can do something like this. Um, I can say plus that NFE, of which is a number format exception object that is being thrown, 
I can say get. So these are the methods that I can call. OK, so one of the methods that I can call, it is the one that says that get the message, the actual message um, that accompanies um, this, this um, that accompanies this uh, this exception that has been thrown, and after that I can do something like that. You see, so here that variable simply allows you to access a number of methods that uh, relate to the exception that it is thrown. So if I were to run this again, somebody enters a queue. Can you see that I get now the message that says that unexpected input type then the reason for that they call it for input string q do you appreciate that yes sir. Uh, um yeah that's fine but what about the number format exception if we are dealing with numbers with number format exception right yeah yes i'm listening uh I, I was saying like if you are dealing with numbers like numbers uh, we're supposed to say touch number format exceptions right no you, you, let, let me also write at the beginning i love you the question that you are raising katabe it's very important to appreciate something here it is that these 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 exceptions that we are talking about ne? we we are not thumb sucking them we are not guessing them you know, what's very important, every method that we work with, it will tell us to say that what exception is it throwing? Now, the reason that we are handling the number format exception, it is because this, this, uh, this method called pass int, all right, it is throwing a number format exception. That's what, it, that's what it is throwing. And then we will handle that number format exception. We are not handling anything other than the number format exception. We only handle the number format exception. We are specific. We are guided by the method header. Are you fine on that one? So yes, what does yes. it to throw? It means to throw. <laughs> what does it mean to throw when you say that um, the pass int throws the number format exception? It means to throw. <laughs> oh, in what? In what sense? Like in the sense of throwing. <laughs> yes. In the sense of throwing, what that throw simply says is to say that know very well that when you are working with this method called pass int, the, if 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 you are providing, if you are providing this pass int with an argument that is not passable, with an uh, with an argument. That, that 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 cannot be turned or converted into an into an integer this method is going to throw an exception called number format exception meaning that your the, your argument it is not in the correct format and then immediately that a method throws an exception you know what that means Mulumba. No, sir, I, I don't know. It means that. Imagine yourself being before that ATM of yours, ne? You are yes, trying sir. to withdraw money, ne? Mm, yes, sir. Yeah, and then when you are trying to, to withdraw money, and then you enter your three, three digits rather than four digits, and then suddenly you just see a blank screen. Yeah? Would yes. you appreciate that, uh, Mulumba? No. Yes, you wouldn't appreciate that. Because what 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 the ATM would basically be saying to you, it would be saying to you, wait a minute, you are providing me with three digits. I am supposed to work with four digits. So this is an error. Oh. So that the computer or the program now has two options. Option number one is to go berserk, is to go wild. By going wild, meaning that it is just for you maybe to have a blank screen, uh, to just have information that you don't necessarily need, information that is not informative. All right, that's going per se. Um, but the second option gets to be whoever is writing that program 
of the ATM can say that, you know, when this application of mine receive numbers, uh, receive a uh, receive a, a pass uh, no what is it? a password that it is not four digit i'm not just going to throw my toys have you ever seen a, ch a child throwing their toys do you have a sibling somebody no. very younger than you at home yes i do do you know what do you have you experienced a situation whereby they throw their toys no they, they don't do that they don't have toys not, not that yeah we can say that because they're yes. young but they <laughs> yeah i i have two kids yeah ne? a two-year-old and a four-year-old maybe at one stage i will uh, i will just take a video and then and, 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 and then show you what happens when they throw their toys and then it's not it's not a pleasant scenario so you don't want people throwing their toys but yeah. what, what you want to to see happening is that when a problem is taking place and then that problem must be attended to in a in, in a in a graceful manner that is yes. the handling so going back to this pass int method when you look at this method header it says to you you as a programmer know very well that if you don't provide this method with a string that is possible this method will throw a number format exception. So ensure that in the case that that happens, manage that situation. Do you get that one? Yes, sir. so basically exception handling works, on, works with errors. Yes, there's an if, error. If I'm... Yes, you're right. There's an error, then it is your responsibility to handle the error, to manage the error. So now, well, what difference does it have with the if else? If, cause like, it's, you can give a condition for the if and then else, if it doesn't enter this, you, you make an error message. Yeah. So, sorry, Ney. Sorry yeah. for asking you. I was also about to ask that question regarding mm. if statement and catch statement. It seems like it's looked the same because you can also write um, something like an error message and say if it's not like this and then put error. Mm. Yeah, yes. no, it doesn't work the same way. The, the, <coughs> Sorry, the, okay. Yes, my question was. If we uh, someone like let's say I didn't use the J option, like I used the system dot out and stuff, the error message will be a different one. It won't be a true number something. It will be another one. It won't be what? I'm saying because you use the J option in your code. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I used like system dot out uh, print line maybe. The mess, the error message, will it be the same? Yes, it will be the same. It, it will be the okay. same. Because, um, Father, yes, Jesus. Yeah, it will be the same. I think that is fine thus far. The, the, the number, remember that the message, it is the message of the stack trace. The stack trace simply tells us the occurrence of events to say that where the problem occurred and then what caused the problem. You know, that, that, that is the stack trace. So it will give us that kind of an information. Um, maybe I can do something here just to show you an expected in, in input type. Let's try this here. If I say NFE dot can I get the stack trace? Okay, to string. But uh, feed in the stack trace, what do I get? Okay, but if you go that route, get the stack trace, it won't work well. Oh, oh, I can do this. Father, but what do you think you can do here? Yeah, let's, let's, tr let's try. Um, maybe I can do it here. 
if I say NFE dot um, do something like print the stack the stack trace. Okay, what's that? Through printed it should be removed. Why should it be removed? I don't think so. Let me check here. Let me see W. Oh, this is the state trace. Okay, but but truth be said, that's not what I'm really interested in personally. What I'm interested in is to say that when a problem happens, when a problem happens, I want to handle that. I want to handle that problem. And then how am I handling it currently? I am, what have I done here? Get the message. But what, what am I doing here? It is just by displaying a user-friendly message. That's it. That's how I'm currently handling, I'm handling it. All right. Um, so if I say W, I don't want to see the stack trace. I just want to see message that is you is user friendly. That's all that I want to do. Um, and then with the help of the of the bull, of the flags, I am able to repeat. Okay, and then I have something that is correct. So that is the end of the program. Right. Also, the, the case. Okay. Nzazi. Yes. Oh, Mumbasa. Yes, Mumbasa. Yes. Yeah, so I have a question. You say exception handling works with uh, errors. And we know that there is two types of errors, syntax mm. errors and logical errors. So does it work with both of them or only syntax maybe? Um, yeah, you, you know, can I, can, an, an exception is, is bigger than an, it's, it's, it's more than an error. It's, it's more than an error. Yet loosely, we can say an exception is an error, but it's, it's not, it's, it's more than an error. It is more than an error. Um, but let, I think what we what we can do in this regard is just to say that when an exception happens, something that is outside of the rule, outside of the norm, when that that happens, it is it is our we are duty bound to 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 handle it. So what is then going to happen, Mumpasa, it is that maybe let's wait for the session of tomorrow. Okay, this was just a taste. Ne? This was to me. This was just an introduction. To, to 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 exceptions and then it was deliberate on my side just to to start it by showing you by, to start with it um by making use of an example basically it was deliberate just to 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 wet your taste buds right but what i'm going to do then tomorrow we are having a class tomorrow so tomorrow we are going to go deeper into the theoretical part of exceptions and um, I believe that from what I've managed to do with you basically for today in honors will also be on you to just go through your books um, and then just go and read about exceptions um, and then and then and then when I come back tomorrow and then then we'll be able to have a an informed interactive um, and active uh, session between the two of us what do you think no problem in here. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. So let's do the following then for, for, for today. I think with regards to the presentation, I'm fine. Um, I, I think we have done justice when it comes to the introduction of the of the concept of exceptions. Tomorrow we are going to go into the details on the theoretical part of it, but not only are we going to do the theory part of it, we will also delve 
into the practical part thereof. That's what we'll do basically for tomorrow. Right, that's it about that, uh, about exceptions. Now let me quickly make some announcements. So the very first one that I want to make it is the one that says that we we I'm almost done with the matching of your of your of your assignment number one. Before the end of the week, you are going to get your how matching was done together with the memo. And then remember that the memo is is is, is but a guide. Okay, Malulege. Uh, so you can finish our time, and I will ask at the end at an okay. administrative questions. All right, all right. So, so what we will then have it is that we will I will provide you with all the necessary data, um, so that you can be able to engage me further. Um, well, one of, one, one of the things, especially now, I always say to you that you guys, you are now seniors. Né? So it means that there is more, there is more freedom that we are going to give you. Um, so I expect our interaction between the two of us. Uh, it, it, it must be a fruitful one. Um, I want you to start to, to, to start applying yourselves. I want to see you gaining that confidence in yourselves. Um, I want to see you, you know what, being able to present your own viewpoint. If you are correct, I give you 100%. I don't have a problem because that's what I want to encourage. Um, but, but, but where you are going ro wrong, then I, I will be in a position and even in other, the other lecturers to be able to correct you and say that, okay, this thinking of yours, you are right to this extent, but you need to correct here and there. Then you become a better person. You get to be confident of yourselves, okay? Because where you are going in the industry or where you, if it happens that you, you open your own business, you'll always be given problems, all right? It will be expected of you to analyze the, the given problem. It will, from that analysis, it will be expected of you to be able to, 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 to design a system and the last thing to do, it is the it, it is the programming part of it, all right? So the way that Mukhashwa uh, analyzes and, 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 and designs a solution will be far different from the way that Mulumba does it, all right? So what, what, what we are doing now, it is to make sure that we fine tune the thinking. All right, we fine tune the, the thinking. You do things your own way, um, and, and we correct you, you develop confidence in yourself so that next time you get to be able to do things better. That, that, that's what we want to accomplish at this stage. Because our belief it is that the basics have been dealt with. That is why, you know, uh, things such as your if statement, your while and the likes, those are the things of the past. You are now a senior programmer. When looking at a problem statement, you must see instances where the basics are required. I'm not going to going to emphasize your if and in your while and your two while. That is for that is for first years. You need to get to the higher level level of analyzing problem, a level of of designing solutions, and a level of implementing uh, your design. That is the level that I want to work you with you at. So that, so that is the very first part. So the reason I was telling you it was basically it had to do with the with the what do we call it had to do with the assignment uh, memo that you are going to get. That memo is my it's my view. That memo is my view. That is why I think even in, in question one I said you must do things state things in your own way. And then I said that I don't want to see a textbook staff here. I want you to tell me your own understanding of the concepts that I gave to you. So it means that we are going to read, we, we read all. When, when, I, when, I, when I get to the script of Mukhashwa, I, I, I then look at what is Mukhashwa saying about abstract classes, all right? And then I correct that, that understanding. If it is correct, it's 100%. If it is not correct, then I, I'll be in a position to correct him accordingly so that he has a good understanding of this. The next one is the following. Next week, this oh no no. Before saying next week, this week, I'm going. To, I want you guys from for all the campuses. All right. Remember that we are working on a project here. 
So what, what we are going to do it is that I want you to send through to me the details of the groups that you belong to. To say that this is our group, it's four of us, um, these are our details, full names, student numbers. Those you basically need to provide to me. The reason that we are doing this, it is that next week we are going to have a session. In that session, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a day session. Yeah. In that session, it's going to be me. It's going to be Mr. Franz Khoete from Emala, from Limpopo. Epolokwane is going to be, I think, Unko Sikona from Epolokwane. You guys, as groups, you are going to present to us your, your, your projects. You are going to show us what have you done thus far. All right. We will look at what you have done. And then we will also make recommendations to say that what, what more you need to do. All right. Our expectation then will be you take our recommendation, you implement them so that your solution can basically become nourished in a way. OK, so in that session, we, we are not going to give you or to allocate marks. We just to have a chat. We want to have a chat, a talk with you on what we have done. So then you know, we want to see quite a number of basic things. We want to see your, how you have analyzed your system. We want to see your design. Um, we, we, we want to see how far are you with, with the implementation. So that's what you'll be doing uh, for us. That is next week. And then no, no max allocation. Then the last, maybe a week before we end with the, with the semester, um, or even the week we're in, we end the semester, we are going to have a session. That session now, it is where in we will really be allocating marks to you, to the work that we would have done. We will mark you, we will grade you. All right. So that is what we want to see happening. What else, dear Lord? Okay, let me, the third part that I also wanted to talk to you about, it is to say that we, we are going to do what, dear Lord? We are only left with two concepts. It is exception and exception handling plus the uh, and file management. That's what, those are the two. So my intention is that this week, I'm going to, I'm going to finish the, the concept of, 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 of exceptions and exception handling. And then the following, the following one, and then we will work on files. That will be it from our side. All right, I am done on my side. Manuleka, stage is yours, man. Yes, sir. so I wanted to ask, so when it comes to the assignment and in particular the interfaces, mm. I'm not sure if uh, my question, what I wanted to know, so for example, um, in the notes, you yeah. have, let's say, I'm looking now at lesson six interfaces, where yeah. you have determined amount due in the interface, um, in, in the interface itself. Yeah. And then you also have it again in the fruit class. Uh, so I was a bit confused because in another example, you have, if a method is common, it's just in, in the interface and not in the class itself. So uh, can I, I ask, listen, just the, can I ask the, what's the, in the in the class that implements that implements that interface is that method abstract or implementable or implemented um okay this one is not right give me a second okay so the assumption is if it's abstract then it would it would just appear in the class Okay, here's the question. If it's abstract, right, it, it's going to be in the interface anyway, because interface has our abstract classes and... Um, abstract methods. Yes, abstract methods and our our constants. Of course, we separate the two. Yeah. So it would be in the interface, one would assume. And, yes. And it would be in the class only if it is not abstract. In other words, it's used in the subclasses. 
let me put that like, let me put it differently. If it's used the same in all the subclasses, then it is in the superclass. Implementation. Uh, Implementation. Yes. Yes. So yeah. when yeah. I look, look at the interface for shop manager, mm. uh, it has all our methods, which it has to call the abstract. And then the shop manager uses them, but they're not appearing there also. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I realize my question might be very long, so if, if we don't have time today, it's fine. I'm not even phrasing it correctly. Okay. But no, I just wanted clear clarity on that one. Okay. No, okay. Firstly, um, Malulekane, if you look at an interface, ne, generally, an interface simply says that this thing that this application that we want to create, what are its capabilities? What is it that we want it to, to be able to do? So we will list the, all of them ne, to say that one, it must do one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the things that this, uh, this, this application of ours must, must be capable of. So that gets to be our interface. So an interface, in a way, it gets to be a contract. So we would be through that contract. We are simply saying that anyone who who is going to use this this application of of ours, they should know very well that this application of ours is capable of doing, let's say, the following five things. That's an interface, and then that application of ours must live up to that contract. Okay, yes. so that's the first one. So all in that interface, then all the met, all the functionalities of which are methods that we are mentioning that they are abstract. It's just promises, ne? We are making promises like politicians. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then it is a class that implements that interface that must give an implementation to each and every method that it is in that interface. But if that class says that, no, I am not going to give implementation to all of these methods that, that I am getting from the interface. So that class, as a, as a consequence of that, that class must then be rendered, must be made to be abstract. It, it, it's, it's not fully concrete. It yes. implements certain methods, others it doesn't implement. So what will then happen is that all the subclasses then that are extending the class that is doing the implementation, the, the super class, all those sub, sub, subclasses, they will then be forced to give implementation to those methods that are not implemented from the interface. Those methods will always remain abstract. Yes. Yeah. And normally we do that, we, 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 we make methods to be abstract in a superclass only when we see that the subclasses are implementing that method differently. Yes. But if those methods in the subclasses are implementing the same way, we don't make the method abstract, we, we just give implementation to it. Yes. So, so if we... Um, so, okay. If, so, okay. All our methods would be in the interface as a contract to say that these are all the methods that the class will be using, either the class or the subclasses. These are all the methods. So my understanding is that we would have all the methods in the interface to show the contract, right? Yes. Then the question is, what, what, what do we do then in the class and in the subclasses to sort of represent those methods? Do we leave them out? because one of those classes will implement them, or do we show which class is implementing what? And if so, how do we justify the shop interface and the shop manager class that I see on uh, lesson six? Where, mm. where, where the, the methods, the contract for the shop interface are in the interface, but we don't see them written in the shop manager uh, 
I don't know if you can see the thing I'm talking about. Maybe you want me to share my screen or, okay. but the shop manager does not have those classes inside and there are no subclasses. You, you, uh, you can share your screen. All right. Um, Sorry, sir. May I ask a question? Yes, Katab. We're supposed to attend another class. Can you wait this uh, tomorrow, please? No. Yeah. Yeah. Maru, like, what do you think? Which class? Which class are they attending? We are attending database right now. You know, Malulek, what I think, ne? because, you know, I, I love what Malulek is currently raising. Because what Malulek is raising over here, he, immediately that we can be able to, to derive common understanding, you know, it will open up the eyes of quite a number of people. That is my take. So, Malulek, do, do you mind maybe what if we can say tomorrow it's, it's, it's what? It's Tuesday, ne? Yes. And then yes. on Tuesday, we have a class from 9 to 10. And what happens? Oh, let's do it this way, Malulek. Tomorrow, ne, le, let's talk exceptions. You hold on to what we have done now for now, you know, this issue. Uh, as I said, that this is going to be beneficial to quite a number of people. All right. But let's hold on to this question um, for tomorrow. Tomorrow we just have a class that is going to be strictly on exceptions. But on Wednesdays, on Wednesday we are having a class from 3 o'clock until 5 o'clock. It's a double period. So what we then can do it is that I'll make sure that the first 30 minutes we just talk around this issue that we are raising. How does that sound? Yeah, it sounds okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Manulek. Right, guys, thank you very much. Um, enjoy the rest of the day. It was wonderful working with you. And may the good Lord richly bless you. Thank you very much. All right, let me stop the recording.